First off, I want to invite you to donate to the ministry here in Ukraine where I'm preaching the gospel. I do need donations because I'm here on a volunteer state permit. That means I'm not allowed to work. I have to be here doing my volunteer work to help Ukrainians and preach the gospel to them. So go to the links in the description down below and make your donation. And if any of you can also dedicate to donating monthly, that would be very helpful. Now on with the lesson. So this lesson might actually scare you. I can't say it's not going to. It's likely to. I'm going to first read to you some notes and I'm going to talk to you off the top of my head. When Jesus talks about him and the Father setting up to dwell with the believer, he's not by that bestowing on each believer ultimate authority to circumvent either the authority of the civilian authorities or the authority of leaders in the church. Now, I know you've never heard anything like that, so you've got to take it in. You've got to take that in. Jesus, when he said that he will come and he and his father will come and set up a dwelling with you. By that, he's not giving you authority that gets around the authority that's instituted among men or the authority that is instituted in the church. And you hear that and you say, oh, church is just an institution. It's just made up by men. Bible doesn't talk like that. That's a modern concept. Very modern. It's not even from Luther's time. The Bible doesn't talk about that at all. It doesn't talk about things that way. Look, I'll prove it to you. Ready? Otherwise, Peter would not have penned by the Spirit of God in his letter that Christians must submit to every authority instituted among men, even despotic ones. He says so. That you must submit to them. Peter knew what Jesus taught that he and the Father will come and set up dwelling with the Christian. So where is this circumvention of the civilian authorities, the civil authorities? It's not there. In fact, it's the opposite, that you must submit to those authorities. Now, I know you're going to, every bone in your body is going to fight against that. Every thought in your head is going to rationalize against it. That means you are a rebel against the testimony of God. You reject this. When you say that I hear from God and no one else can tell me differently, you reject the testimony of God. You are not a Christian. You're not. You are not a Christian. And that is not Christ you're hearing. And that is not God who's speaking to you. God would not contradict his own testimony. So when he says that he and the Father will set up a dwelling with the Christian, it is not to circumvent the civil authorities and your requirement to submit to them. Even further. Ready? Likewise, the author of Hebrews would not have pinned by the Spirit of Christ that the Christian must submit himself to those who rule over him in the church. He says, but the church is just an institution made by men. It is not. It is not an institution made by men. It is an institution made by Christ himself. Have you not read the Gospels? Have you not read the New Testament and Acts? Do you not know that Christ chose 12 disciples? Why did he choose those 12? And why were they called the 12 apostles, minus Judas, replaced with the one that they chose by lot? Casting lots, right? There are 12 apostles who are the 12 foundations of the new Jerusalem. You think that the church was instituted by men? You reject this. You absolutely reject the Bible. You reject the testimony of God. You've been deceived. You've been deluded by modern arguments from the world. That is not from the church. That is not from Christ. That is not from God the Father. It is not here. This speaks completely the opposite. All right? That's not enough. Let's go to Paul then. Ready? Likewise, Paul would not have pinned also by the Spirit of Christ, 
that he might have to come with a rod to beat the Corinthians for their unruliness. Paul laments that he might have to come and beat them with a rod. Now tell me that Christ and the Father set up a dwelling with the believer to give him ultimate authority in order to ignore the authority in the church. It is not for that. You are a rebel. You hate God. You reject the Bible. You are an enemy of God. You are set for perdition. You are damned. And if you do not repent, you will not get out. And I'm warning you this day, not out of hatred, out of love, because I don't want to see you suffer from that. But you'd better turn. and You better stop fighting against Christ and fighting against the church and fighting against God and stop rejecting his testimony. Christ did not create the church in order to divide each person unto himself. He didn't come to divide us all up into independent, isolated islands of authorities. It's impossible that every Christian is hearing God speaking to them in such a way that it undermines their submission to the authorities in the church instituted by Christ himself. Christ is not divided against himself. He said so. He said so. Jesus said so. He said a house can't stand if it's divided against itself. And yet you think it is. You think every Christian has their own ultimate authority. Or rather, you think you have your own ultimate authority from God directly and no one else does. You shameful reprobate. You shameful reprobate. You egoist. It is impossible that Christ is leading each Christian through an inner voice into contradicting authorities Christ appointed in the church through the foreknowledge of God. Christ, through the foreknowledge of God, appointed us as leaders. And you think you have authority to contradict us and that that's from Christ? Then who established the church and who is the one who appoints leaders in the church with the foreknowledge of God? Bible in Acts says that we have hands laid on us by faithful men who went before us, as I had. And I especially say that it is impossible that Christ is speaking to each Christian in order to give them ultimate authority through an inner voice, regardless whether that authority is ultimate over only that individual or over other people as well. Christ is not putting a voice in you from him that is an ultimate authority over you. Or an ultimate authority over other people. Christ is not doing that. That is not what Christ does, and it doesn't speak like that anywhere in the pages of the testimony that God Himself gave. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You should be utterly ashamed of yourselves for allowing your ego to get puffed up so much because you've gotten a little bit of knowledge and you think it's so much knowledge. And you think that that little bit of knowledge has given you so much power just because you can think sentences and put sentences together. And you think they make sense and you think, therefore, since they make sense in their sentences, that it must be true. You are living in the system of the beast. Okay? You really want to hear the truth about what's going on. You know 666? The mark of... You're living as if... You've taken the mark without having yet taken the mark. And you'd better change your ways. Six is man. This is no secret. Six is man. It says so in the Bible right there. Six is the number of man. And we know three is divinity, God. So what would 666 be? Take a wild guess. It means man in the place of God. You have placed yourself in the place of God. Oh, but I'm hearing a voice. I'm actually hearing a voice. It's God. It's from God. Watch this video. I've, I've already promoted it in many of my recent videos, and many of you do not watch it. You had better go watch it because you are damned, and there may be only one way out, and that's by watching this video. It's a thorough study 
of the Antichrist and what that spirit creature actually does by sending out those spirits of Antichrist, as John calls them, is to deceive you, Christian, into thinking you're hearing God, but it's not God. It's an alternative to Christ, pretending to be Christ or pretending to be God or pretending to be an angel. And then the Christian says, well, God told me, oh, God said this, and you become a false prophet de facto. And then eventually you walk away and leave the Christians who are gathering in church. John says exactly that. So when you see these men who are out there saying that they're hearing from God, and they're calling you to leave the churches, well, if they're apostate churches, okay. But they're saying to you that you cannot be in any kind of fellowship gathering with other Christians. And that is a lie. That's a lie. John said that those went out from them because they weren't from them, and they were deceived by the Antichrist spirit, spirits. And that's what you're doing. When you're walking around saying that God is speaking directly to me, and therefore I have that as ultimate authority over my life, and I don't have to listen to leaders in the church whom Christ himself through the foreknowledge of God the Father called and appointed for your benefit to keep you from being deceived and ending up walking away from Christ and the body of Christ. You're living as if you have the mark of the beast already, and you better correct it. Time for me to go to church <laughs> and take this to heart. Watch the video a second time. Think about it very seriously. And may the Lord bless you as you truly seek Him and correct these things with all your heart.